Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Jay God. In today's video, we're going to be ranking the Black Ops 4 specialist from worst to best. So keep in mind that your list will probably look similar to mine. It could even look completely different because of the criteria that I'm actually going to go through as I rate each of these specialists. So some of the criteria I used to create my list were the kill potential of the particular specialist, the ease of use, the overall popularity of that specialist, as well as their ability to turn the tide in the match. And obviously everyone's going to have different preferences, so I'd like to know your guys' thoughts down in the comment section below. What do you think are the three best specialists, and what do you think are the three worst specialists? Also, as a quick reminder, if you enjoy the video or these types of videos in general, please remember to hit that like button, and if you want to find your way back to the channel, make sure you do hit the subscribe button with notifications on. Let's go ahead and get into the worst specialist in my opinion. And the worst specialist in my opinion at number 11 is Recon. And in case you guys didn't read the message of the day, this is the one that Treyarch labeled as the most popular specialist in the community. So I was completely shocked by that. So many people were joking that this is a horrible specialist, not very useful, and definitely not most popular. When the game first launched, I thought this was a much better specialist, but they've done things to nerf it in ways that actually make it a lot weaker and that it's not very viable in the current meta. You're trying to go for a lot of kills, this probably isn't the one you're trying to do. You're trying to play the objective, it's not that great either. I mean, you could actually get some easy score if you just kind of sit there, wait for all the three passes to go by and you mark all the enemies for your teammates. But in between those three passes where the enemy players are lit up red, they end up being grayed out. So sometimes it can be very hard to see and they kind of blend into the background that is all gray in itself. And the only way I could see this one being viable is when we use it as part of the Carnage team challenges. When someone was really close to a streak, we could actually use a different specialist ability, which could light up the enemies on the map so those other four or five players could get that next kill, which will get them to their next streak. With that, we'll go ahead and transition to the next specialist that's going to take that number 10 spot. And a lot of people actually thought this specialist was going to be overpowered at launch, but it turned out really not to be. And that specialist that I'm talking about is Ruin. And the only problem I have with Ruin, it's kind of a niche type of specialist where you're only going to use it if you want to move around the map very fast, play super aggressive, and if you actually have your grab slam available, you're going to be able to clear out the specific objective, or you get that get out of jail free card, which really means you can spam that ability the second you know that you're going to be out positioned or outgunned because maybe you didn't make the best move. So getting back to the grappling hook, there's only a few scenarios where it's really going to be useful. Maybe you're playing fire and range, you want to get to the little sniper tower. Maybe in the second half of a domination match where you want to get to the B flag as fast as possible, or if you're playing search and destroy, maybe you want to get to plant the bomb as quick as possible, get there before they expect you, you can actually use that little grappling hook to get there much faster. But overall, when it comes to the big scheme of things, it's not very useful. And before I get 101 comments saying you're just dumb, you don't know how to use it, I'm telling you it's not very useful in the big scheme of things. Obviously, if you know how to use it effectively, you can use it on multiple occasions. But for the general player, they're not going to really get much out of it. So with that, we'll go ahead and move on to the next specialist that takes the number nine spot on our list. And that one is going to be Nomad. And overall, Nomad is just very consistent. Obviously, you could place those tripwires if you're a smart player, put them on specific objectives. People run through them. They end a ton of streaks, especially if the person's not running engineer. Even if they are running engineer, sometimes it's very hard to see the wire. But the main reason I marked this one so low is because of that dog. It can be very inconsistent. Sometimes you get it out there. And it's going to be an attack dog that kills everyone on the field. You'll get multiple kills. You get this nice little feed with the dog. Then other times it acts like it doesn't know where even the enemies are. And it can be a pretty easy target to kill. A lot of times if people are team firing, the dog goes down rather quickly. So definitely on the ease of use side, this one's way up there as far as ease of use. All you do is call on the dog. It does its thing. But overall, it doesn't have a ton of kill potential because it's very RNG, luck based, random and personally i think it's one of the key things in the game that needs to be completely overhauled and reworked because i don't think it has a place in the game where you basically just call it in and it does everything for you so let me know down in the comment section below do you think it needs a rework in some way or do you think it's fine exactly the way it is with that we'll go ahead and transition to the next specialist that takes the number eight spot on this list which is ajax so initially in the beginning of the game ajax was a lot stronger especially when the nine bang didn't really have a counter even if you ran the attack mask it wasn't very effective but now with the introduction of Tac Mask being as powerful as it is and basically nullifies the flashbang altogether, he has fallen significantly on my list and he's really only on here because he has this ballistic shield which is a little bit overpowered at times. And it's honestly one of the most scary things you can actually run into in this game when you are on a streak 
I know I've been on 24 streak before. I come around the corner. I see this guy with his shield all out. Regardless if you're skilled or not, this is very easy to use. You just pull that trigger. You get about 100 bullets. You're going to be able to kill some people. And overall, this one isn't too great with the exception of playing hardpoint. When the hardpoint actually moves and rotates into a smaller area, you can actually sit in a corner with this thing. Get that hill time or at least contest the hill so definitely one of those specialists that's very annoying to play against so the next specialist we'll go ahead and move on to is number seven on our list and that's no other than torque and i know this one's going to be very debated in the comments section a lot of people are going to tell me that torque is probably their most used overpowered all that type of stuff if i was making the number one specialist to camp with i would actually put this at number one for obvious reasons but since i'm taking that holistic approach focusing on kill potential ease of use, popularity, and their ability to turn the tide, I place this at number seven. If you play any match, there's probably some guy using Torque sitting up in a room somewhere. I know it's very popular on Seaside, Nuketown. There's always this camper's paradise where they put down the barbed wire, they put the little barricade that microwaves people, and they don't even place it strategically, or at least not strategically for the team. If you're playing an objective game mode, a lot of times the ideal place to put the barbed wire and the little barricade is on B flag or to protect one of the home flags or whatever the case is. But they don't even do that. They just go ahead and hide up in their room, put the barbed wire right behind them, or they use that barricade in a similar fashion with the goal to camp, which everyone's entitled to play however the heck they want. But at the end of the day, I don't think that's one of the best ways to improve and actually get better at Call of Duty. So very annoying to play against, especially when someone has the goal to camp. So let's go ahead and transition to the number six specialist right at the middle of the pack, which is Fire Break. And the main reason Fire Break makes it so high up on the list is because obviously there's an ease of use. It has a pretty good kill potential if you're in the right position. And then the other part is its ability to change the tide. The Purifier has definitely become significantly better after they went in and fixed some of the hitbox issues. So you're able to get a lot more feeds more consistently. And honestly, one of the things that makes Fire Break so powerful is its reactor core. It is the only specialist where its equipment is as good, if not better, than its specialist weapon. And I think that reactor core is especially important when you're playing hardpoint because you could take everyone off the objective. And on top of that, anyone hit by that reactor core will not be able to go to full health for an extended period of time. So now we're cracking into the top five specialists on the list, and number five on the list is going to be zero. And it's because of that ice pick that zero ranks so high in my opinion and it's for two different reasons related to that ice pick before zero got introduced to the game i would typically run that uav drone squad maybe a hellstorm and maybe even an attack chopper those would be kind of my four different streaks i'd cycle between depending on which mode i was playing i would go with that uav and the two of the others or maybe just skip the uav and go with all lethals but once she was introduced into the game, basically I am never running that drone squad, never running that attack chopper with fear that she might be in the lobby and hack it when it comes time to use it. So her introduction to the game is so powerful that it affects your decisions before you even go into a match. That's the primary thing. And the other big issue with the ice pick in my opinion, especially if you're playing solo and you're trying to carry your team, and you really need the streaks to do that because when you have players doing really bad on your team, you're gonna have to go above and beyond to carry them once you start calling in these streaks, they could still go ahead and shut them down, and there's not really much you can do. When you're one person, there's only so many kills you can get without those score streaks and be able to carry your team. Let's go ahead and move on to the number four ranked specialist, in my opinion, and that is going to be Crash. He's actually my personal favorite when it comes to specialists. I've used him more than anyone, and I'll kind of explain why he's so up high on this list. So earlier I mentioned some of the criteria, which was the kill potential, ease of use, ability to turn the tide, as well as popularity. I think he fits all of these criteria. When it comes to kill potential, the fact that you get extra score, extra ammo, all that type of stuff, it synergizes pretty well that you can actually get your streaks a lot faster, especially if you use that comsec device. On top of that, you can typically run an additional perk instead of scavenger, which will save you another one of your pick 10 slots, which is very nice for either an attachment, a sight, or like I already mentioned, some other perk that has value to you. Definitely easy to use. You can go ahead and use the heal mechanic. It's super simple. Everyone bumps up to 200 health, which is especially nice if you go against the reactor core. You can make it so that everyone's able to heal if you time that properly. So there's a lot of benefits with it. Not really too many downsides other than you don't really get lethal kills other than getting those score streaks. So now we're getting into the top three and the number three specialist we'll go ahead and talk about is Seraph. Overall, the Annihilator gives Seraph a pretty decent kill potential, but the real reason they're so up high on this list is because of that TAC deploy. The TAC deploy could single-handedly cause a team to lose a match 
or to win a match. And for most of you that play the game, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If this is played strategically, it can very much turn the tide in a hard point match or a domination match. If it's placed very poorly, it can lead to spawn trapping and all kinds of nonsense for your team, which is not a good thing. So please don't choose Seraph if you don't know how to place that spawn beacon. The ideal location is not in your own spawn, by the way, just as a heads up in case you're one of those players that does that. Moving on to the second spot, we're going to go ahead and talk about battery. And battery is way up here for obvious reasons that kill potential it's almost too easy to get kills with battery. She's one of the few specialists that actually have two lethal abilities as far as the equipment and the weapon. I think the recharge rate on the cluster nade is a little bit high. You can get multiple in one life if you survive a good amount of time. And then that war machine is almost too powerful. You're not gonna see it in blackout. Somehow it completely disappeared for people to do that challenge. And when it comes to overall ease of use, it doesn't take much to actually get a lot of kills with this weapon. It's almost borderline requisitions when it comes to kills because you're almost guaranteed to get kills. I've seen it happen plenty of times in my lobbies where someone's getting a quad feed, they're even getting a five piece. And then you go ahead and check the scoreboard and the person's struggling to go positive or they're like 10 and 35 and they just got a five piece on screen. You're like, how the heck does that happen? No other way than some overpowered specialist and obviously it could be countered with black jacket or a little bit of a trophy system but that's not really what you use in public matches i think it's way too strong way too easy to use too much ammo blast radius too large there's a lot going on with it if you like using this one you probably enjoy the free kills and you know exactly what i'm talking about if you don't really use this one should probably use it a lot more because you will get a ton of free kills now we've made it all the way through the list we went all the way through 10 other specialists and we are down to the final specialist the specialist that takes that number one spot if you haven't guessed it already is going to be profit and profit is probably the most popular specialist for anyone that is a try hard a sweat a slayer in the lobby trying to get as many kills as possible and that is because of its specialist weapon when you're able to chain those kills together you can get some nice four, five, six people on screen. That is pretty disgusting. Doesn't take a ton of effort. Obviously, you got to hit your shots. You got to line it up perfectly. But anyone that has reasonably okay accuracy can get tons of kills with this weapon. And more than likely, if you've gotten a few kills on your way to pulling out that specialist weapon, you're going to be able to get all of your streaks after you've pulled it out. And the other thing that I didn't even mention yet is that little shock drone that goes around. If you follow it, you're going to get guaranteed kills. And if you're on that camo grind, you can get guaranteed headshots because they're basically standing still. You're at the right angle. They're not going to even be able to shoot you. you get an easy, nice, clean little headshot. And that's what moves this one so high up the list. Its specialist equipment is very good. Its specialist weapon, very good. Ease of use, high kill potential. Can definitely turn the tide once you start chaining those kills together. If someone's on the objective in the hard point. You're going to be able to chain multiple kills together. So overall, it's probably the best specialist in the game. For the average player for very good players and even for very bad players so that pretty much wraps up my list ranking all the specialists in call of duty black ops 4 from worst to best let me know what you thought of the video down in the comment section below what did you agree with what did you disagree with if you did enjoy the video in any way please remember to hit that thumbs up so we can get this video over 500 likes and if you're a brand new viewer and you made it to this point just hit the subscribe button with the bell turned on obviously you enjoyed the content if you stuck around this long so there's no harm it's completely free you'll find your way back to the channel and get more amazing content do appreciate all the support on the video thank you guys for watching and as always have a great day